Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm going to take you through the A2 content relevant for the OCRA specification for what is a chiral centre and optical isomerism as a type of stereo isomerism. Now what we're looking at here is what happens when a carbon is bonded to four different atoms or groups. So for instance if you take this molly mod kit just here, we've got a carbon in the middle and let's say it's bonded to one atom here which could be a hydrogen, another atom here which could be a chlorine, and then let's say these two aren't an obvious kind of oxygen and nitrogen. Let's say that one of them could be a CH3 and the other could be a CH2CH3. They would class as different groups. So because the chain length is different, or if it was a cyclic structure, the ring would have to be non-symmetrical, these get counted as different groups. Okay? So if we have a molecule like this, what it means is the carbon in the middle is a chiral center. And if we match this up, with a mirror image of itself, like so, what you have are non-superimposable mirror images. They are literally just like your hands, except for mine with the ring on, so let's get rid of that. Don't tell anyone. If we have my hands just like that, it's literally like these two molecules, and you can see when I hold them up next to each other, whilst they look exactly the same, just like my hands, I can't superimpose one on top of the other because my thumbs stick out. So here, when I try and superimpose one on top of the other, for instance here, the green and the white match up, then the red and the blue don't. And I can do it any other way I want. So let's say the red and the green, let's try and match them up. And you'll see that we have a constant, there we go, mismatch all the time for two of them. So for instance here, the red and the green match up, but the blue and the white don't. And so sometimes when you have these molecules developed in biology, you only make one of them. Because plants or animals can be very, very clever and use enzymes to coordinate the production of just one particular optical isomer. However, because of the presence of a chiral center, when we synthesize things in a lab, we often get both. Now, sometimes this isn't an issue at all. For instance, here, what I've got for you is a molecule that I found via this poster, and you'll see types of this available in our labs. It's down here, and it's actually the sweet caramel aroma that's in coffee, and it's called furanol. Now, this just here looks like a normal molecule until you examine it a little bit more closely, specifically looking at this carbon down here. Now, because it's skeletal, it's hard to spot this chiral center, but if you show the hydrogen on, for instance, here, you'll see that this carbon is bonded to a CH3, a C double bond O, an oxygen, and a hydrogen, which makes this an example of a chiral center. There you go. Now that means that there is a non-superimposable mirror image of that particular carbon which may have different effects. But in this case it actually has no difference in its effect, so it's absolutely fine. But there are obvious, very dramatic examples where it does matter, such as that of thalidomide, that you'll have to do a writ of research for yourselves to find out more about. There's also lots of different questions using structures like this in the OCR exams where they give you a molecule that you're unfamiliar with, like some of these here for instance, and ask you to find the one or more chiral centers involved. Check back to your notes for the fact that some of them can actually have different aromas and so on, but also look in your notes very carefully in your um, optical isomer section for when I've given you some quite large structures with multiple chiral centers and got you to dig through them looking for those different ones. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlist, and don't forget that there is another video about chiral centers looking at the chemical weapon sarin, which should just be popping up on the screen in a moment, or via the cards, that you can check out and have a look at the different effects of an optical isomer there as well. I'll leave you to the rest of your work. Happy revising.